This week on Undercover Boss Canada, the leader of one of the country's most vital charities swaps the boardroom for the soup kitchen. Bob! We're in serious trouble. She'll go from power suits and heels to aprons and hairnets. Yeah, I've seen you before. Whoa! What are you doing? This girl will never make it. And when her week of secret surveillance is up, she'll call the workers she's met to Food Banks Canada's national office to make their Friday unexpectedly special. He spent the day with me. Sorry. <laughs> well, thanks, Shelly. With the world economy in a fragile state, top corporations must adapt to survive. The bosses of some of Canada's biggest companies are about to take extreme action. To stay ahead of the game, they're going undercover in their own organizations. With growing numbers of families struggling to get by, there's unprecedented demand for Food Banks Canada. Every month, nearly a million people rely on the organization. And shockingly, 40% of those it helps are children. I'm the executive director of Food Banks Canada, and I'm responsible for supporting the food bank network across the country, so 10 provincial organizations and 500 food banks. The volunteers and staff are exhausted. It's important for Food Banks Canada to really understand what those struggles are and what we as a national organization can do to support them in the best way that we can. A lot of people believe that food banking is government funded. And that, in fact, is not the case. The, the funds and the food is coming from the communities. Growing up, my parents were very giving. And I can remember a time, I wasn't very old, where there was a family that had no home. My parents said, come and live with us. Often in life, I think there's a time where we need to reach out, where something has happened and we need some support or help. I remember my father saying to me, Catherine, you never know how one little thing that you might do can touch another person's life. And this job really gives me that opportunity to be able to make a difference. While I'm undercover, I'm going to tell people that I'm Shelley Wilson, that I live in a rural community just outside of Guelph, Ontario, and that I'm participating in a documentary on nonprofit organizations. Okay. Now, with a radically different look, will Catherine's family recognize her? <laughs> she looks like when she was a little girl and I cut her hair in a pixie cut and she's never forgiven me. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of standing back, though. It's just a very different look from what I'm used to. I know it's her, but it doesn't look like her. <laughs> but before she joins the front lines, Catherine's called her leadership team together to give her disguise a test drive. How do you like my new look? What is that for? This is incredible. Wow. Huh. Please explain. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to change my identity and become Shelly in this disguise for a week. Basically go undercover and meet with volunteers and staff from food banks across the country. Oh, wow. Man. Do you think I'll be recognizable? No. No. <laughs> no, not at all. I hope Catherine will come back with a lot of valuable information that we can actually use so that we can support our food banks better. We'll see you in a week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> wow. What I'm really looking forward to is just not a tour where I quickly get a, the overview of, of what's happening. I really want to experience firsthand what it's like for food banks today. I want to know what else we can be doing as a national organization to help them. Coming up, is Catherine's cover about to be busted? Yeah, I've seen it before. <gasps> And later, a worker pours his heart out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yesterday, Catherine Schmidt was executive director of Food Banks Canada. But now, she's on the breadline. 
I would never wear an outfit like this. Feeling a little silly. I'm visiting the Mississauga Distribution Centre, which is one of the busier food banks. They support 65,000 people with 2 million pounds of food each and every year. I want to see firsthand how they're managing the high demands of their facility. Being in this building is risky um, because I've been here. Some of the staff and volunteers have probably seen me when I'm here. Good morning. I'm Shelley. Hi, Shelley. I'm Doreen. My position is operator of the warehouse. I fill orders and for food banks and agencies. I've seen you before. Have you? Oh, I don't think I've ever met you before. Unless you have a sister. Anyway, so I understand that um, um, you're going to show me what you do today. And you're going to work. Hopefully she'll just keep thinking that I'm familiar and she won't figure it out. I hope. Their first task is to organize hundreds of donated food items for boxing. Check for expiry date. 2013 is November. Okay. If it's expired from six months back, we can't give it out. Best before... If it's beyond the best before date. That goes right into the garbage. I don't think that Doreen realized that some of that food could be still quality, safe food to consume beyond that best before date. That goes right. You don't even, you wouldn't even have to ask me. It automatically just throw goes it in there. OK. I think that there's an opportunity for some education on best before dates versus expiry dates. Beer boxes. Well, they were donated from a company in Quebec. Oh. And it saved us a lot of money. Let's get us beans. Fruit. Here's our fruit right here. Okay, you're just whipping that around like it doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> there. <laughs> Those are heavy. Get your muscles. Holy smokes. That's why you can't you are in keep great in shape. shape. She can't keep up with me. <laughs> She could be a little bit faster. You do this yourself, and you okay. see how you do. Cold drinks. The hot was there. It's insane. The labels are in a different spot on every box. Hope you're not uh, mixing cat food and <laughs> in with the milk. I only have one more to go. Fruit's right here. That one was easy. Oh. <laughs> Next, they'll have to arrange an order of food and household products to be sent to a local food bank. Okay, I got myself backed into a little bit of a corner here. Run for it. Oh, no. Sometimes you really got to push on it. There you go. <laughs> okay, I'll help you a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Two peanut butter. And the peanut butter was over here. Yeah. I think. Oh, no, that's drinks. Did you find it, Shelly? I was thinking the peanut butter was here, but... Well, I'm having some... Well, this girl will never make it because, you know, she's a slow woman. There it's veggies. Peanut butter. Oh, yes, it is. Peanut I was right. Maybe I'll be like that one day when I get old. <laughs> a case of soup, two cases of meat, but we don't put the meat on until they are here, and then we don't set the meat out. Oh, so right. is it in yeah. the fridge? That's is a, there a fridge? Like a freezer, yeah. I swear I saw you someplace. What's that? I thought I saw you so Oh, my goodness. She just brought it up again. I don't remember meeting her, but it doesn't mean that she hasn't seen me somewhere at some point. We need paper towels. I'm sure we'll find paper towels back here. OK. So that's all they've asked for. They'll come in a car. They won't come in a transport. They'll come in oh, a car. OK. So do we help them when they come? Sometimes I do help them. Right. Because you know, sometimes they're older people, and you don't want them lifting some of these heavy boxes. Yeah, and I almost want to start laughing because she's older herself and yet doing an incredible amount of physical labor. If a product's packaging is damaged, they have to tape it before sending it with an order. We'll just put it in this box for now. Okay. So do you have family? Do you have any kids? I have two daughters, three grandchildren. That's enough. <laughs> do they live close to you? Oh, like, they do live you see with them? me. Really? One daughter lives in the basement of the uh, house, and my daughter, the other daughter, and the three kids live with me upstairs. Oh, but I don't mind it. it. It worked out for us, so. The 43-year-old just went through old, uh, cancer, the uterus. Oh. Last year, she had to have a total hysterectomy 
everything taken out. There was nothing left. Wow, she's so young. She's 100% free of it now. Got it so all. they got we it got all. all. Now I don't know how I would have coped with it that way. With that, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you had lost. No, I don't know. One of your, one of your babies. One of my babies. One of your own <laughs> my babies. My oldest one did that, right? Yeah. I think that Doreen is an incredibly strong woman. She's amazing. Okay, so we're almost done in this part. Okay. We're going right to the back here. She's hardworking. She's dedicated. Everything is done except for the meat. We'll get the meat in the freezer. She's an inspiration to not just the people here, but I get a sense for her family as well. Well, Shelly, we're finished for the day. Thanks, Doreen. Okay, you take care. You too. Okay, bye. Bye. -bye. Food banks are in the business of recovering food. One of the things that I've discovered is there's an opportunity for Food Banks Canada to be able to do more education and training so that we're recovering as much food as we can. Coming up, a surprising revelation. I'm grateful for real life. And later, a frustrated worker lashes out. Whoa, what are you doing? It's day two of Catherine Schmidt's secret snoop of Food Banks Canada. I'm on my way to Richmond Food Bank Society where 135 volunteers pack 2,600 food hampers each and every month. I want to find out more about the workload of the volunteers and if they have adequate training. Excuse me, do you know uh, where Mark is? I'm Mark. You're going to be helping me today. Great. Mark has been volunteering at food banks for 10 years, and he wastes no time in putting Catherine to work. They must unload and sort a large delivery of donations before the door is open to the public. That's too heavy. That's, that's, that's no, okay. No, that's oh, right. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. I'll try it. Yes. Wow, she's strong. It's been a while since I hand-bombed food off the back of a truck. Oh, my God. That is hugely heavy. And it was a really good reminder of how physical the work really is. Oh, my goodness. Oh, fine. We need to hurry. OK, to get this sorted. Yes. Everything is marble. So buy food and buy size. OK. And the faster we do this, okay. the better. The better, OK. Um, what usually happens with volunteers? Is there some well, some training, like what you're giving me? Training, yes. But also recognizing mood of your customer. Some people, when they're hungry, they get very short-tempered. So it's good to be observant. And I wish we had more education towards that. Mm. Mental illness or disabilities. Because that's what kind of people use a food bank. I would really like to find a way to help Mark so that there is more training for the volunteers so that they can handle whatever situation might come up. So, Mark, I'm putting um, vegetables, the kind of this size in here, but then there's a tomato. Is that just considered, or that's, okay. I think I'd need to do a couple of shifts before uh, they actually would say that I was at all helpful. The most important thing we have in life is time. Mm -hmm. It's the most precious thing. Yeah. So. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly needs to be faster. She is a bit slow. There's a lot of hungry people out there. Yeah, people come line up like for an hour before. Sometimes it could be raining or snowing or very cold. So we need to hurry up and get this. Oh, perfect, thanks. I'm surprised at how much work we're doing to get ready. Packing hampers, pulling out fresh frozen food from the fridge and the freezer, getting it all out, while at the same time we know that people are waiting to get the food. It seems Mark's experience is starting to rub off on Catherine. She's finally getting the hang of things. There we go. Hey, you're <laughs> pro. We'll give you some apples, oranges. It's almost Very like a kale. Corn. I think yes. you would just, um, oh, just yeah. cook it up a little bit. What is this called? 
Greens. Greens, okay. Yeah. Green. I thought maybe oh, kale. Dal. I thought maybe kale, but I didn't know. It's one of them. I'll say green. It's greens. the same thing. <laughs> yeah. You know it's what? green. Go with the color. There you go. Very cool. But something happened to me that I had to turn my life around. And that's when I learned how important the food is to us. What happened that turned your life around, Mark? Well, I had a severe brain injury. And I can talk or walk for many years. Is that right? And that's right? why I sound So different. how did the brain injury happen? It was a car accident oh. 10 years ago. So the injury, you couldn't walk? I can walk. speak, I you can walk. I can use my hands. I used to play a band. Oh, that's I excellent. I built enough in my hands so I can make so music again. So you can play again. again. It's amazing what the human body can do if you treat it right and you help it to recover. Nutrition is very important. I wish there was more education to watch that. Mark really is a, a really good example of where one day life can be wonderful, things can be fine, and then something can happen, and the next day your life can change. I think we're done Are here. We done? Okay. Yes. So that was my previous life. Wow. I was living high life. And I had money, and I thought I can buy everything. But you can't buy health. My dad was ill at least for 20 years before he passed on. And he used to say, if you have your health, you have everything. Yes, that's very true. He was the wise man. Hmm. One of the things that really helped me in my own recovery was the music. When I can speak for a couple of years, I just listen to music. It's clear that Mark has a huge passion for music. It's what got him through the last eight years. And I would really love to do something for him. I'm grateful to be alive. Hey, high yes. five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so inspired by Mark. So from not being able to walk or talk to contributing the way he's contributing today is just amazing. That was a great day. It sure was. Coming up, is Catherine in over her head? OK, now you're on your own because I can't be babysitting. When she's put in charge of the kitchen. Bob! And later, a sudden confession stuns the boss. And if it wasn't for the uh, place like this, we'd be dumpster diving right now. Next Thursday, the... Food Banks Canada's Catherine Schmidt is being put through her paces as a volunteer in her own organization. Oh, no. I'm on my way to the Sudbury Blue Door Soup Kitchen. These programs are so critical to keeping people from going hungry. They rely solely on donations, and I want to find out if they have all the tools that they need. Good morning. I'm looking for Bob. That's me. Oh, hi, Bob. I'm Shelly. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm here to help you today. We're uh, very busy here, OK? Yeah. So breaks are far and few between. OK. My job is cooking, managing, looking after the volunteers, making sure the clients are all happy, like so. Great. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Uh, just OK, OK. My apron is stuck. Oops. I got myself here. Bob has a pretty intense stare. I'm hoping my wig doesn't shift. I don't want it to fall off. OK, so this way. Yep. OK, great. Doors open at 11. Everything's got to be ready. It's got to be bang, bang, bang. 220 to 300 people today. Oh, we have 24 seats. So, so it's an in, out, bang, bang, bang. OK, so we don't have much time to make a hot meal. We don't have a choice. <laughs> we got to move. <laughs> yes, well, let's go. Okay. Can you get that Parmesan cheese open, please? Okay, you're not going to do it that way. Go grab a knife in the first or second drawer. Thank you. Uh, do you have a little bit of kitchen experience? or? Um, not in a commercial kitchen. OK, you're going to have to hurry up. Eh? We can't be fighting with the lid. Two cups of parm cheese in there, please. Don't be shy. Do you measure, or? I don't have a measuring cup. Okay. I know what it is. Are you sure? 
Put it in your hands just yeah. to make sure. Okay, now you're on your own with your next pen. Okay. Okay, I got two bins of sandwiches in the fridge, all ready to go. In case, um, just in case, just in case, yeah, we always have to be prepared. I have never ran out of food. What do you do? Do you turn down somebody and say, I'm sorry, you can't eat? Why? Let's be organized, let's prep it. Let's do our best to help these people. We've got lots to do. All right, right I got it. Okay. Let me grab a knife here. Okay, that's, that's dangerous. Hurrying is one thing, but safety is another, okay? I find if she speeds too quick, there's no safety. Where should I set it? There? Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Okay, now you're on your own. Okay, because I can't be babysitting. How's that ham coming? You said you need... What well, what's, seems to be the problem? Shelly! Yeah, right what here. What are you doing? I don't need somebody watching me. Get over there, set up the chairs on front. Bob's pretty intense. Bob's pretty focused. He's, uh, he's got a lot to do. We got all that meat to cut, and the meat cutter isn't even working. The slicer, clearly some resources that are, uh, not 100%. How's those chairs coming? Good? Yeah, I'm just about there, Bob. Thank you. I think Bob has eyes in the back of his head. He is watching me every second, right from across the room, even. She set up the, the dining room. Not too bad, but it was only 70%. 70% ain't good enough in our soup kitchen. A crooked chair is not a welcoming to these, to these people. This is like their supper time, and they have to feel wanted. If I have one thing on my wish list, it's new tables and chairs for my clients. And you gotta remember, they're probably sitting on a sidewalk or sleeping under a bridge, right? Yeah. Be nice for them to have a decent they place to sit. Napkins, fold them in half, I don't it. Okay. okay, Yep. go ahead. Whoa, what are you doing? Touching it with my hands. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but are your hands clean? You just finished doing the chairs yeah, and everything. Yeah, Okay, Can you pick one. Let's go. She has to work on cleanliness, personal hygiene. Shelly, hurry up, please. I don't try to be mean, but are you showering back there or are you washing your hands? Girls, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. We're going to be on time. I'm getting the feeling that deep down inside, he's got a pretty darn big heart. So I'm looking forward to spending a little bit more time with him and really figuring out the whole picture of who Bob is. You do this every day. Every day. But I love it, you know? The pay's not good, but it's really rewarding. What so, did you do before? I worked in group homes for kids. Okay. I've had my own restaurant at one time, too. But I got out of it. I lost half my foot uh, due to diabetes, three toes amputated. So I, I applied here. I love it. It's great. Wow. I was in a cast for uh, close to a year. So I said, well, I'm not going to sit at home, and I'm not going to rot. I can help other people in different things. So I had the great opportunity of applying here at the Blue Door Soup Kitchen. And uh, it's been great ever since. I think we need to find some other desserts? No, you need to find them. OK. Where would I look? Walk-in cooler. Yeah. Hang a right. Mini Four. muffins. Mini muffins. Yeah. OK, in the fridge. White icing. White icing, mini muffins. Shelly, are you baking those All muffins right, or you. what? Let's go. Shelly, for this position, you have to have a warm heart and tough skin. Um, even my, my, my facial expression looks like I'm miserable, but I'm not. We prepare them the same way? What are you doing? Yeah, go get new gloves. You just touched that door handle. And I did it again. Shelly, let's go. Bob's pretty bossy. I want to make him happy, so I'm working. Denise? Shelly, this is Bob Jr. Hi, how are you? Good, you? My wife and uh, myself have adopted uh, Bob Jr. Uh, about a year ago. Night first. When times are down and everything else, he can bring me up. He's taken over my heart. I know where it goes. My son and uh, wife are uh, very important to me. And then I got my second family, which is my volunteers and my other two staff. And if I never had them, I mean, I would be nowhere. OK, our goal is to be completed everything by quarter after 10. So what time does those vegetables come out? How long has it been? I'm going to guess. Well, time right now, we don't guess, OK? We can't guess. Let's see how our veggies are doing. Shelly, let's go. Bob. We don't serve these people what we wouldn't need ourselves. 
We're in serious trouble. Coming up. Shelly, get over here. Catherine's in hot water. Don't be scared. My head's spinning. And later, how will Doreen, Mark, and Bob react when they find out their helping hand is the head of operations? You spent the day with me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. Ah! Executive Director Catherine Schmidt is feeling the heat with only five minutes to go before the doors of the soup kitchen open. Don't be scared. Okay, we're gonna need a steel pan over there. Shelly, get over here. Bob is barking out orders one after the other after the other. My head's spinning. Let's go. Just don't touch the water. Just drop it. All right. Morning, everybody. With things now under control, she takes the opportunity to sit with the clients. Bob's been showing me the ropes, and yes. I hope we put together an okay meal. Oh, this is okay a fantastic meal. meal. Oh, good. So have you been coming uh, here? I've been coming here for actually quite a few years. And if it wasn't for the uh, place like this and the organizations that fund these places, I mean, we'd probably be dumpster diving right now, or most of us would probably be in a ditch dead somewhere. You know what I mean? Do you get to know the people fairly yeah, well, yeah, then? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. And how often do you come? Yeah, well, sometimes it's twice, twice every, every, every day. You can't, you can't talk to people while well. <laughs> Then what do you do all day? <laughs> My heart goes out to them. I'm so pleased to be part of an organization that is able to reach out and help these people. So you got to cut your uh, conversation shorty. Let's go. Oh, I better head out. It was very nice oh, no, meeting you. you. Yes. Yeah. You too. 220, yes. 300 people we got to feed today, okay. so let's go. The toughest part about this job is knowing that when they walk out that door, they're back on the street, and you don't know where they're heading. What makes me happy and satisfied is knowing that I've helped the best I can in my power. I'm done. OK, this is ready to go. This is loaded. Just push in your tray, close up the door. Great. Oh. Bob comes across initially as a gruff, sort of harsh type of gentleman, and, and really he's just got this big, huge heart. So you thought today went pretty good? Really inspired. I mean, you were a chef, you're a cook, and you're doing it in an environment to really give back. You've just, you've just opened up your home, you and your wife, to, yeah. a, to a little boy. You're being a great father and a mentor to raise him. What sorts of things do you do together? I got a 1957 Chevy. <laughs> it's uh, yellow with a white roof. Go to car shows. That car, you know, we'll be going to him, so. How did he come into your, into your life? Oh, it's in uh, like a beach ball from a foster home to another and so on. And uh, so Bob Jr., when he came to us, you know, we said, uh, not moving anymore. This is it. You belong with us. Exactly. My life has changed uh, all for the better. Sad, lonely nights or whatever are over. Always something to do. Uh, always a challenge. That's the way, you know, life should be, is that somebody has something solid in their life, creative, and can move on and be happy. And hey, that's Bob Jr. Well, thank you very much for, can I give you a hug? Sure. Thank you for, uh, showing me the ropes and being no, patient no with me. <laughs> no problem, you did an excellent job. Bob has an incredible outlook on life. He's able to overcome the challenges that he's been faced with. And what I see is an incredible organization that is feeding two to 300 people today. They do a fantastic job with incredibly limited resources. And I wanna go back and see if there's something I can do to help them. Coming up, a family's heartbreak. Catherine meets driver Graham. <laughs> Catherine Schmidt is almost done with her week on the front lines of Food Banks Canada. Wow, she's strong. She's been finding ways to make the organization stronger at a time when resources are stretched. You got all that meat to cut, and the meat cutter isn't even working. But it's not been easy. Whoa, what are you doing? Hope you're not uh, mixing cat food <laughs> in with the meal. This girl will never make it. She's just arrived in Saskatoon for her final day of work. 
Saskatchewan actually has the highest percentage of children being helped by food banks across the country. I want to find out how drivers are handling these high demands. Hey, are Hello. you Graham? Yeah, I'm Graham. I'm Shelley. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Uh, we oh, gotta get okay. going. Okay, well, let's, let's get going then. Graham picks up donations from supermarkets and warehouses across the city to distribute the food to local schools so that kids get the essential nutrients they need. There's been a few times this winter when it was like, I mean, just near blizzard out, and they're like, well, we're gonna, we're gonna ground the truck tonight, today. And I'm like, no, no, I'm good. They're like, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm fine. And you go out even if the weather's bad? Yeah. Wow. If I don't get them the food, the, the kids don't eat. Kids don't understand the logistics of what I do. They just understand that there's no food there or there is food there. That's all they understand. So we're going to try to get in and out as quick as we can so that we're not in their way. OK. Bread going one. OK. And then anything with sugar, you throw in the second okay. bin. A lot of this stuff will get separated again. Like the bread will get separated from the buns. Where did these go? Which one? In the in one? pastry. OK. Oh, man, you're fast. I don't even really look. I'm just, that's on autopilot. It's just instinctive. I just move that fast and then move on to the next bin. And no croissants or breads. Oh, oops, I'm trying. I feel like I'm slowing him down. Now I got to get the dairy. So then we just take it, throw it in the, put it in the bin. OK. And then we're done here. Are you always in this truck, Graham? Yeah. The, the seat weight only goes up to 210 pounds. <laughs> oh, is that right, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so if you weigh more than that, you can't drive the truck? No, I broke it. <laughs> is it uncomfortable for you or no? You get at the end of the day, you later, you're like, oh. He needs a new seat in his truck. OK, now we've got to get to the schools. Uh, a lot of kids come, come to school hungry. If the kids can eat at school, that it only helps the family out more. I did grow up hungry. I did go without. I did go, you know, there's times when we uh, ate bread with HP sauce, you know. I think the biggest lesson I ever learned was we had to go to the soup kitchen. I was pissed off. I was like, I ain't eating this f***ing stuff. Yeah. And this old man leaned over and he said, son, he said, you can't eat pride. He said, you can't live off it. If you ain't going to eat that soup, can I have it? Wow. Yeah, that hit me right between the eyes. Wow. Hearing Graham share his story just made my heart ache for him. To kind of come on to this side and help, uh, it, it's, it feels pretty good to do, to do that, to know that there's kids getting fed. Bye-bye. I had two younger brothers. There was a situation where we had no food, and I sent my younger brothers to some friends because I knew they'd get some supper. And it was basically the situation is where I had to eat a milk bone. That was the only food we got. Four in 10 people helped by food banks are children. It's a key concern for us. I got some welcome. milk for you. Oh, okay. I think I need to do a lot more thinking about what I learned today and bring it up as we do future planning on, on what the needs really are and what can really help and make a difference. With their route completed, it's back to the warehouse to drop off the truck. OK, so you have you have kids? Yeah, I have uh, uh, four. Ethan's the third oldest. Mm -hmm. Ethan is really special because he only has a two-chamber heart instead of four-chamber heart. And his heart's uh, over here instead of here. Really? It's a rare condition. and. Uh, most times kids were born like that died. Okay. And the fact that he's, he's going to be 15 soon, there's nothing short of a miracle. I can't even imagine. I used to go to him and read to him every night in the hospital. And uh, when I... <laughs>
life can really be hard sometimes. Yeah. I can tell your family are very, very important to you. They're numero uno. Wow. I feel compassion for Graham. He so loves his little boy. Just broke my heart listening to what he went through. Take care. You too. Okay. One more. The volunteers and staff that I've met this week have been just absolutely wonderful, caring, warm people. I've learned how incredibly under-resourced food banks and food programs are and how there's so much they're doing with so little, there's so much more they could do if they had more resources. I'm looking forward to going back and meeting with our staff to talk about some of my new observations and to think about what we can be doing differently, what we can be doing better. Coming up, Doreen, Mark, Bob and Graham are summoned to the national office and it's time for Catherine to put her cards on the table. I'm a little in shock. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Shelley. Thank you very much. Executive Director Catherine Schmidt's week of undercover investigation is over. Hey, everyone. Hi, Hi Catherine. Catherine. It was incredibly insightful. I learned a lot. One of the things that was amazing was just how exceptional the volunteers and the staff are. The food banks are doing such amazing work with such limited resources. And it was great learning for me to start to think about how we can better support them so they can better reach out to the people who really need the help most. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Doreen, Mark, Bob, and Graham have been called to the national office. They're expecting to give feedback about the volunteer they trained. But they've got no idea what's really about to happen. Hi, Bob. Do I look familiar um, yes, to you at all? Yes, of course. The one that helped me at the food bank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not Shelley. That really isn't my name. You're not? I'm Catherine Schmidt, Executive Director for Food mm -hmm. Banks Canada. You spent the day with me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm a little in shock. <laughs> you were fantastic. You had me working. There were two things that struck me that were important to you. You have a concern about sensitivity training. I know it's also really important for you that people coming to the food bank understand nutrition and are able to make very healthy food choices. I think that that's very important. We're going to be able to provide training to you and the other volunteers for everybody that's coming to the food bank. That's awesome. Mark, you just so inspired me. We went through a tragic accident. Yes. And you've been able to bring yourself back, and today you're giving back to, to other people. What you do will come back to you. We have a very generous donor who is allowing us for you and your band to go to a studio and record your music with a top engineer. Ah. We've also organized for your band to play in one of the top festivals in Vancouver. I hope you're going to join us. I will come. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mark. My heart is beating fast, but that's good. That means I'm alive. OK, you're fast. And clearly, I need a little bit more training. <laughs> it's running bread. <laughs> and I was so impressed with the work that you did. From your childhood, you really understand people mm -hmm. who need help from food banks, particularly children. Yeah. And um, I could tell in your work that it's important to you. <laughs> yeah. I also noticed that you could use a new truck seat. It can be uncomfortable, like right now, because the roads are so bad. And you're in the truck all day. Yeah. You need a comfortable seat. Well, I'd really like to do something for you, Graham. And uh, with the help of a very generous donor, we're going to get you a brand new seat for your truck. Holy, <laughs> wow. I was also really touched, Graham, by how much family means to you and your children, and particularly Ethan, who has so many health challenges. How does a one week at a lakefront cottage for you and your family sound? You're wow. gonna be able to spend time with your kids with the help of a very generous donor we're going to be able to send you and your family away for a whole week. Lakefront Cottage, you can do whatever you want. Swim, fish, boat. We're gonna cover all your costs to get you there, um, to rent the boat, the cottage, 
and we'll make sure that we cover the cost of, of your wages for the week while you're off. So you'll be able to just go and have fun. Uh, thank you so much. That's holy mackerel. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it's pretty spectacular to be recognized for the hard work. This trip means that he can be a kid and I can be a dad. It was so great to get to know you, Doreen. I really enjoyed my, uh, my day with you. Are you still sore? A little bit. You worked me hard. <laughs> I didn't work you hard enough, I don't think. <laughs> Those boxes were pretty heavy. They are. They are heavy. There's lots of slugging to do. I'm sure I'd have to come a few more days to be able to uh, oh, we'll work you, as quickly as you we'll do. We'll have you any time you want to come out to volunteer. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, it was, it was nice working with you that day. My day with you really gave me a better understanding of the work that you're doing. One thing I did notice, there was some food that actually got thrown out that could have been shared. You think so? So what I'd like to do is to be able to provide yourself and the rest of your staff team and volunteers right. on with some additional training on best before dates versus expiry dates. Well, that would be good. I also want to do more for you. You work so hard and helping to support your entire family. You've got seven people living at home, <laughs> your daughters and your grandchildren. You've oh, got yeah. three generations, Doreen. I help them out as much as I can if they need it. But uh, life is like that, right? With a very uh, generous donation, we're gonna provide you with a gift certificate for $2,500. Oh, thanks, Shelley. From a major retailer so that you can go and purchase whatever it is you want for your home. Oh, I'll put it good use. And I do hope that you spend a little bit of on something special just for you. Oh, I will. <laughs> good. <laughs> I will. And thank you very much. It was so wonderful to get to know okay. you. Okay. I'm grateful for Shelley coming to work and acknowledging what I do. I'm so excited to be able to tell everybody. Bob, I went undercover because um, we've got soup kitchens right across the country, and I've never myself worked in one before. And you serve two to 300 people well, in a matter of a few hours with a very limited amount of space and resources. Yeah, it's good. It's something to be proud of. I would really like to be able to do something. We're going to be able to get you brand new chairs and tables. Oh, well, thank you. For your soup kitchen. Our clients will really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Fantastic. There's a little bit more to this. I can tell how important your son, Bob Jr., is to you. It's amazing that you and your wife have taken on adopting a young boy. You are so giving. And when you talked about Bob Jr., I can tell that he is the most important thing in your life. I also know that you have a love of antique cars. You've got a Chevy 57 yourself. I do. I do. <laughs> that you share that love of antique cars with um, with Bob Jr. I do. I do. With the generous support of a donor, we're going to send you and Bob Jr. to a national classic antique car show in the East Coast. A true maritime experience, all expenses paid. Right on. I don't know how to thank you. Thank you very much. And it was, it was great. It was fantastic. I remember <laughs> that for the rest of my life. My heart is just pumping right now with joy from my son to the clients. I couldn't ask for anything else. Yeah, totally speechless. What can I say? This experience has been a exciting journey. It inspires me to continue. My father once told me that you never know how one little thing that you might do can touch another person's life. The staff and volunteers that I met have really changed me. I'll never forget this experience. Next Thursday, the...